You have Parkinson's. Three little words that change your life. Hello, my name is Kathy Mollohan, and I'm here to share some of my thoughts and experience with you um, about how and why, above all why, to build a Parkinson's network. Um, and to help you remember my story a little bit better, I'm going to use some little pictograms. I hope that works well for you guys. Um, I've cho chose this little fellow first as a person um, pictogram because it really is a people's journey that I'm talking about. And I'm here to share my experience with you. That does not mean that this is a all-encompassing view of Parkinson's. It's my story that I want to share with you. Now, the previous speaker, Rune, had, he was a bit of a rebel. He decided to go for four different messages. Now, I'm sticking with groups of three. One, two, three, sorry. <laughs> now, Parkinson's fingers up in the air. Um, I'm going to share three milestones with you. I'm going to share three messages with you. And I'm going to share three tips with you with the help of these little pictograms. So let's get started. And my image for the milestones that I want to choose for, share with you are, is this little stop sign. Why? Because it's three milestones in my life where I really stopped and really, really, really had to take stock of my life. The first milestone was my diagnosis in the year 2011. That was my day zero, the shock you all know, or many people who are listening to me today know. The second milestone, the one that made me stop and think, was when I went to Portland with the first World Parkinson Congress that I attended in 2016. And my third milestone was DBS, Deep Brain Stimulation Surgery, in 2020, so just last year. Now, each of these milestones, each of these little places where I stopped in my life, helped me to answer the question, why build a Parkinson's network? So let me get started with my first milestone. 2011, I was 39 years old. I was a wife, a mother of two children, aged three and seven, a business owner. And suddenly I hear these words, you have Parkinson's. What, why, where, who, when, above all, why? Now, why is the one question that building a network cannot help you with? Why is where you need time and where you need reconciliation with what's happened to you? But all the other questions, what, what now? Where, where do I go from here? All those questions are why you need a Parkinson's network. Speaking of questions, here's my next little sign, a question mark for you. How do you build a network? There are so many sites, there are so many places to go. There is so much information out there. I ask myself, what do I do now? Like I said, big questions come to mind. And in the beginning, I decided to stick with my preferences to say, okay, what would I do in a normal situation in my life? I didn't have time to go to my local community center at three o'clock to a self-help group for Parkinson's. I was a working mom. I had, didn't have enough hours in my day as I was. But I had so many questions. I had questions about sport. I had questions about therapy. I had questions about medication. For a while, I was happy to consume from a distance. And I think that's very important and that's why that's my first message to you. And this little at symbol is my message. <laughs> so anytime you see this at, this is one of my three messages. My first message is take your time. You will know when it's time to build your network. If you're not ready, you're not ready. Like I say, as my first milestone 2011, I just needed to consume from a distance. So take your time. Now that message does not apply to any of you listening who might be in research. You, please don't take your time. We need answers right now. But those who have been newly diagnosed, take your time. Think about how you want to build your network and what kind of person you are, what will work for you best. Now, my second milestone, I said these little stop signs are my milestones, was the World Parkinson Congress in Portland in 2016 a huge momentous step in my Parkinson's journey. That's where my journey went from being general to being personal, from being consumer oriented to participating in dialogue, from forums to people. That's where I learned the importance of having a truly valuable network. And that is, were you paying attention? The at, that is my second message to you. You will at some stage need to get out there 
and to make personal contacts. PD is a very individualized disease. It's a bit like a snowflake, some people say. It's so individual. No two snowflakes are alike. No two diagnoses are alike. Other people's stories will enable you and empower you. And their stories will enable you to take the next step. Sharing your story will empower people. So you need people. Get out there, make personal contacts. Now, Portland, that's why I chose this little son, was a wonderful experience for me. It was exhausting. It was nerve wracking, but it was inspiring and wonderful. I went there with my mom, who is a very wonderful woman from Ireland. And it was the first time that I'd allowed my life before Parkinson's, in other words, somebody from my family, to meet my life with Parkinson's. And that was a big, big step for me, a big step towards opening myself up to what had happened to me. And uh, let me just tell you a little story about when I went to Portland. After the Congress ended, I was absolutely exhausted and myself and my mum hired a red Ford Mustang convertible. And we drove, we drove to the Pacific coast where it's absolutely beautiful. And I sat and I thought about everything I'd experienced that week and I digested it all. And then when I went back to Europe, I was ready. I was ready to create my network. I was ready to take the next step ready to build my Parkinson's network. Now, at that Congress, I met, this brings me to the next symbol, the fist, I met many, many wonderful people who became a core part of my network. And you will have people who are, who are very core to what you're doing in your network. Um, the fist stands for a guy called Rune, who you just heard speak now. And Rune is a huge advocate of rock steady boxing. Um, and rock steady boxing is a wonderful organization that teaches you the importance of sport. This was something I didn't realize until I went to the WPC, that sport was essential. It's the only thing that can stop or slow the progression of Parkinson's disease just for a little while. I met wonderful people like Rochelle from Ireland, who um, is a nutrition specialist, who taught me that nutritionists should be part of my network. So my network helped me to understand what Parkinson's means for me. Now, I've got a question mark here for you again, because a good network for you, for me, for anybody with PD is a go-to place, a go-to place for questions about therapy, about insurance, disability benefits. What do I tell my kids? What about my partnerships? Like Runa said in the talk before mine, what med medicine should I be taking? Should I be considering surgery? There are so, so, so many question marks in your head when you have this diagnosis. And, you know, most of us, many of us at least, see a neurologist twice a year if we're lucky enough to have access to a neurologist in the first place. Now, I don't know about you, but I have questions a lot more often than twice a year. So that's where the value of a network comes in. You need people. We're back to people here. You need people. You need people. No one can do this alone. So my third milestone, we're getting there. My third milestone was deep brain stimulation. Um, this is where my network really came together for me. And that's my last message that I'd like to share with you. Again, we've got our little at, our little message sign. And my last message that I want to share with you is you need a network. So the network is there when you need it. Tilt, think about this for a minute. You need a network because you need your network to be there when you need it. And I think we all know PD is full of surprises. You don't know when you're going to need your network. So be prepared. I need my network when I went to hospital for DBS. And even before that, when I was preparing for my DBS surgery, I needed my network. I needed it really, really badly. My big moment had come again. I had so many questions. Will I remember being awake during surgery? What does it feel like to have your head drilled open? A bit more vain, what does it feel like to have your head shaved? That's why I still have a bit of a poodle hairstyle going here. Um, what do I tell my kids? How will they deal with it? So many questions that come up. And you sit there thinking, you know, I'm having this, ama this surgery. It's amazing that it's possible, but it's scary too. Life has taught really kind of rolled the dice with me and given me something that I wasn't expecting. 
Yes, life has given you something you weren't expecting. It's given you a tough hand when you have Parkinson's. But I had my people. I had my network. I had people who were there for me. I had Young Onset Parkinson's group on Facebook. I had a group on Facebook especially dedicated to dystonian tremor. Locally, here in Germany, where I'm based at the moment, I had people who had experience of being in the hospital that I went to. I had people who knew what physical therapy might be necessary afterwards. I had a network. And my network, my network was my saving grace. My personal network offered me so much. They offered me encouragement. They offered me advice. They offered me humor. They sent me emails. They sent me WhatsApps. They even sent me physical letters, something I haven't received for decades, it feels like, since before the days of email, because my operation actually happened last year in the middle of the lockdown, so I couldn't have visitors. I was not alone. I could feel that my network was there for me. So that is my story in a nutshell, in a very, very short space of time. That's my little Parkinson's journey and my reasons why I've built a network. Now, very, very briefly, and this will only take a second, a question you might be asking yourself if you're newly diagnosed is, how, how do I build my network? Now, this is very personal and there's no right or wrong to doing it, but let me just share three tips with you. One, two, three, three tips with you. Um, as to how I've gone about it. And the first tip, that's a little tick box here. Make sure you tick the box of categorizing your contacts. Now this might sound a bit funny, like it's not a workplace network, but you need to treat it like it is a workplace network. You need to categorize people. You need to say, is this somebody who can help me with nutrition? Is this somebody who's in the same boat as me? Is this somebody who has kids? Is this somebody who can give me advice on speech therapy? Is this a, a therapist in some way, shape or form? Because after a while, your network is going to get so big that you won't know who is who. So categorize and tag your contacts. Tip number two. Tip number two is be selective. There's so much out there. I'm active on numerous forums, but I'm not active on numerous other ones. And that's OK. I follow people on Twitter who I believe are true influencers, the writers of the book, um, Ending Parkinson's Disease, for example, or the PD Avengers I'm very involved in. There are other organizations that are equally as wonderful, but they don't tick my box. And that's okay. Be selective. And lastly, and for me, the most important tip of all is ask, but answer to give so that you can receive. You're part of a very, very, very special community. You should play a role by sharing your story just as much as you ask questions to get help with your own story. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Let me just summarize. We're at the end, thumbs up. Let me just summarize what I've said. I had three milestones and three messages for you. My milestones were in 2011 when I was first diagnosed. My message was take your time. My second milestone was when I went to Portland. And when I went to Portland, I realized that I need people, that making personal contacts was essential to building my Parkinson's network. And my third milestone was 2020, just last year having DBS and realizing that you need a network so that it is there when you need it. So, Everybody, I hope I've given you some ideas and some insights into my journey on building a Parkinson's network, how and why. And I'm very, very much looking forward to receiving your questions in a very short time online. Thank you so much for listening.